All right, check this thing out. What have I got on the bench today? This is a Sony cassette quarter TCM 5000 EV. No, it's not an electric vehicle, but just take a look at this thing. Look at the uh, controls, speed control, tone, monitor source or tape and record mode auto, voice, opera voice operator recording or manual. And look at that little VU meter. Isn't that cute? Backlight and battery check. Remote mic one, VOR, LED, microphone right there. There's a counter. Three heads. Look at that thing. I'm guessing this is probably new in the 80s, mid 80s, maybe early 90s, somewhere in there. Anyhow, uh, the customer sent the adapter with this unit. Let's get it unrolled here. It says Sony on it, but up here it says Craig. Let's zoom in on that just a bit. Uh, Craig 9227 AC adapter, six volts DC, 200 milliamps. That doesn't seem like a lot, but notice that the center is negative and the ring is positive. So let's go ahead and plug this in. I do have power supplied to it right now. And I do have it connected to the side of the unit right there. Sorry about the focus. Let's zoom back out. Power has been applied and just let's hit play. And I get nothing. Capstan's not running. Nothing is happening in this unit whatsoever. Um, okay, so we'll stop that. Let's get a voltmeter out here. And we'll just use the 117 because it has low impedance mode. It's going to put a slight load on this thing. I have 0.0, .0 volts coming out of the AC adapter. Uh... Make sure, yes, I have 125 volts going into it and absolutely nothing coming out of it. Nothing, what about ohm? So we have a short? No, we don't have a short. Can we see a cap charging? And I'm gonna say it's got a broken wire because I should see a capacitor charging if I reverse the polarity. Okay, let's go ahead and grab another cord and I will supply six volts DC to this unit. Okay, so I do have six volts supplied to the unit. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if it does anything at all. Hey, here a motor running. Let's open the door. I've got no movement on the cap stand or the pinch roller at all. But I hear the motor running. So there's battery check and it shut down because most likely lack of rotation. So if it doesn't see the reel rotating after a certain amount of time, it's gonna just shut down. In about that much time, okay. Well, let's go ahead and pop this thing open and see what it looks like inside. I'm sure it's filled with antiquated electronics, which will be very fun to look at. One moment while I pop this bottom off of the unit. Incidentally, there is a note with this unit from Mike in Burlingame, California. Here is my Sony TCM5000 audio cassette recorder, now about 30 years old. It hasn't been used in a while and likely needs cleaning. Mainly the right hand spindle does not appear to be pulling the tape through. I use this recorder for radio news work and it has a unique feature of allowing the user to speed up or slow down the playback, the left hand silver knob, in the event a cassette was recorded on a different machine. Take C battery, slightly used cassette included if you need to test recording. And I'm going to say, yeah, that's a very slightly used cassette because it has the tape wrapped all around 
up in here. So, uh, yeah. Try to spool it out. There's a crease right there I want to get out. And, oh, I think we got it. Okay, so we do have a tape supplied with the unit. I have tapes just in case. Anyhow, this comes from Mike in Burlingame. All right, let's pop this thing open and see what's inside. And wow, I'm gonna say they packed at least 10 pounds of stuff into a five pound box here. Look at that circuit board. Holy crap. Wow, can you even get this thing up to work on it? There's just so much going on here. It's just it's overloading my senses. My ADHD is definitely coming out on this board. I mean, look at all the individual wires that are soldered to this thing. It is freaking unbelievable. But it looks like someone may have been here in the past because I swear, let's zoom in here just a little bit that these three leads right here, the brown, the red, and the black have been soldered on in the past. Now that is what actually connects over here to the external batteries, the C size batteries. I wonder if these had an option at some point for possibly a rechargeable battery in this unit, because normally you only see two leads go into the batteries, and this one has three. And look at that, it's got a center post right there. So probably had an option of a rechargeable battery pack that you could throw in this thing if you're using it for news broadcasting or whatever. And it would charge the battery when it was disc or when it was powered off. And looking at that screw right there, let's zoom in just a bit on it. It looks like it's been road hard and put away wet a couple of times. So I'm going to say this thing has definitely been a part in a past life. Well, let's go ahead and pull these screws out over here. There's one right there, not too de-virginized. That one's not too terribly bad uh, anymore up over here. Um, yeah, that one uh, has got a little bit of use to it. And we're back up. To this one right here that's definitely been used many many times well let's get those screws out and see if this circuit board is going to flip up um, in a semi good fashion or is it going to be a uh, unamicable divorce well I think I'm gonna to have to contact the customer at this point because I can't get this knob to come off and I've tried gentle prying, but I don't want to damage anything. So I tried to pop it off just with a little bit of pressure in this direction. And the outer part wants to come off, no problem. But it's the inner part. And I noticed I had to pull this rubber ring off of it. Someone has applied super glue to it. And I even see a droplet of super glue right there on the knob. So I wonder if someone glued it in place. So I don't want to damage this unit any more than it's already damaged. So I'm going to contact the customer and basically get permission to just brute force this thing off. All right, well, a certain amount of time has passed and I did go ahead and get the knob off. I did have to remove the rubber portion and then I could actually grasp this part with pliers. And I did get it to amicably divorce from the volume control. So I have the board up. Well, not up, up, but up a little bit. Look at that mechanism right there. I wonder if I can zoom in on it just a little bit for you. So by the looks of things, this belt runs around another idler flywheel right here. And then it does a twist and loops up and around the motor and back. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and see if I have a service manual on this unit and we'll print that out.
Well, okay, here is the page from the service manual that talks about belts replacement. So you can see that there's the motor right there and it's turned 90 degrees, almost like a Corvair. And then the belt goes across that idler flywheel uh, to assist with wow and flutter. And then around this guy and back to the motor. So in addition to that, there's a midway pulley belt an A belt, which is probably for the take up, and then a separate counter belt right here. So I'm thinking I will go ahead and estimate to replace every belt in this unit. I may actually have some of them in stock. I do have some new old stock belts. And if not, we will secure the necessary belts to get this unit up and running once again. Anyhow, that's where we are on this unit. So I've just got to get an estimate ready for my customer and see if he wants to proceed with the repair. Uh, it's probably going to be about maybe an hour and a half to two hours. I'll probably end up having to pull the mechanism completely out of the unit to do a thorough clean and lubrication to it. But I thought I'd just show you some inside shots of this unit. Look how well constructed this thing is for the age of the unit. Very, very good assembly. A lot of work to get it apart, so I'm going to have to unsolder some of these leads uh, to get the board to actually flip back because there are there's a big bunch of leads. I think someone's worked on this in the past, and uh, there's just a couple of things that's basically keeping this thing from flipping open. A uh, big record play switch in the back there. I'll definitely want to hit that with some Deoxit D5. But I'm at a point where I can give my customer what I think is going to be a fairly accurate estimate and we can move forward on repairing this unit, the Sony TCM 5000 EV. I certainly hope you enjoyed the diagnostic portion of this unit. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, if you could hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and the platform formerly known as Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Um, actually, at this point, leaving a comment is the best way to contact me just because, uh, once again, so busy, so little time. I'm doing what I can. Um, still months behind on checking emails. Well, remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of the diagnostic portion of this video. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Bye-bye. So hopefully, this is not the end of this repair. Uh, hopefully he approves this and if it's damaged, it's damaged, unfortunately. But I need to get this board up and out of here. It's kind of loose, but the problem is, let's zoom in on this. The problem is, you can see the super glue right there on the bottom of that knob. Right there. Um, this knob is basically retained in the plastic so there's just not enough room for me to like squeeze it out of here and the whole board basically needs to pull back in this direction before i can get this thing up it that's the only thing holding it in i believe the whole board would just lift out of here and i could flip it back and get to the bottom of the mechanism it's so freaking close. It's just, it's held on with that one knob right there and that's it. So pending the customer's approval, well, I'm gonna stop this video at this point and do a part one diagnostic as usual. <laughs> Everything goes way too long, unfortunately, but uh, there's a look at the inside of the, uh, what is it, a TC5000, I believe? TCM5000. Hopefully this is not the end. All right, <laughs> this is the end of this part. Thanks for watching.